Hello again, this is Jason and I'm now going to continue my um, first tutorial about the integrated writing section. Um, we've already presented one tutorial um, which gave some basic overviews and presented a reading passage and a, a lecture that supported that reading passage and I showed you how I would uh, begin that report and how I would write some of the key paragraphs. We're now going to continue um, with another set of materials that do things a little bit differently. In this case, the lecture is not in agreement with the reading passage. It casts doubt on or contradicts that uh, basic information. Again, we're going to stick with this general topic of uh, the pandemic and the influenza in a different uh, sort of context um, because it is a kind of current issue and you might find it um, feels familiar. So let's have a look at a reading passage. This one's going to be a bit longer than the first one I presented to you. Um, I've put it up on the screen there for you. You may like to pause the video and sp spend about two minutes uh, reading it and trying to take some notes based on it. Okay, hopefully you've done that. Um, you've paused the video and you've uh, tried to take some notes about the reading passage. Um, it's a bit longer than the first one I presented, but still about not quite as long as you would get on the actual TOEFL. And I'm now going to present the lecture part of the set of materials. Um, so while I'm uh, reading out this lecture for you, you may like to take some notes, take as many notes as you can. Again, I'm going to go a little bit easy with it, a little slower than the actual TOEFL, um, just to give you a, a better chance to get as many notes as possible. The influenza pandemic of 1918 was particularly catastrophic. Although it is commonly referred to as Spanish flu, there is no reliable evidence to suggest the influenza actually started in that country. In actual fact, Spain just happened to be one of the first countries to openly report about the spread of the flu and its mortality rate. Other countries in Europe and the Americas had already experienced the flu, but were not reporting it publicly due to special censorship laws still in place following World War I. Spanish flu was especially unusual in that it actually proved more fatal to young adults than any other age group. This was due to the fact that the influenza tended to cause immune systems to overreact to it, something called a, a cytokine storm. And basically, the stronger and more established the immune system, the worse it reacted to the flu. As young adults generally had better immune systems than relatively young or relatively old people, they were most at risk of catching and dying from this particular strain of influenza. So there's our lecture, and I hope you've uh, managed to um, deduct the fact that this is, um, you know, not in agreement with what was written in the reading passage. It's presenting an alternative view and an alternative set of information. So just as in our first example, our challenge now is to write a report, state what the general topic is about, and to state the relationship of the materials, giving more emphasis to the listening section of the lecture. So. Let's have a look at our introduction, and as I mentioned, the whole idea is to um, summarize the general topic and to state the general relationship of those two sets of materials. The reading and lecture discuss the topic of the 1918 influenza pandemic, also commonly known as the Spanish flu. The professor casts doubt on several key beliefs about Spanish flu as they are presented in the reading passage. We summarized our topic and we've stated the relationship of the two materials. Nice and simply, not too much information, just a general introduction. We've shown the test assessors that we know what the general topic of the materials was about, and we've also shown we've, we know the general relationship of the two. Based on that, we can now move down and start a new paragraph, and we want to present our first set of, um, of information from the lecture, and then tie it back to the reading passage. I'll put this up on the screen for you. I'm going to put it up right now, and you can pause it, pause the uh, video if you want to, just to read it. it. Might take you a couple of minutes to do that. When you've finished reading, just uh, press play again. 
Okay, now looking at that paragraph, I hope you can see that um, I've paraphrased and explained what the lecturer said, uh, in this case um, about Spain being the origin of the Spanish flu. Um, his view of that is uh, quite different. And then at the end of that paragraph, you'll notice that key point, this directly challenges the assertion in the reading passage that this influenza originated in and had its earliest impact in Spain. So there's our first paragraph, our first main point, and linked to the inf relevant information in the reading passage, showing how it disagrees. Um, let's do it again for another, um, the other main point made by the lecturer and the reading passage. I'm going to put that paragraph up on the screen for you now. You might want to pause the video again and take a few minutes to read it. And I hope what you've noticed now is that um, here the professor's talking about um, you know, how Spanish flu is fatal to young adults and not to older and younger people and the whole explanation about the immune system. Um, I hope you've noticed how he's explained, I've explained that information that the professor gave and then I've shown how it contrasts with the reading passage. This appears to be a contradiction to the information stated in the reading which asserts that relatively weak immune systems caused the worst cases of Spanish flu and that young and old people were the most numerous victims. Now, as per my first set of um, example materials, this is not um, as long as the actual TOEFL test section is. It's a little bit more condensed, but I hope it gives you a very clear example of what I'm doing. I'm stating the general topic of the materials. I'm then giving um, as much information as I can based on the notes that I took from the lecture. And then I'm looking back at the reading passage and deciding how it relates to that information in the reading. And I'm stating that relationship quite clearly, but definitely with a lot more emphasis on the listening information. So that's a good example of what you need to do for TOEFL integrated writing. Um, there are a lot of other things to remember as well, you know, just in terms of writing basics, um, you know, how to form your paragraphs, um, you know, what sort of sentences to use and statements, but I don't have a lot of time to go into that right now. You, if you look back over the video and look at the texts I've given you, the actual written responses, you will get a lot of models there. You'll get a lot of examples of phrases you can use to, you know, state what somebody is saying. To state a relationship, whether it's supporting or contradicting or casting doubt on, but um, also in terms of the uh, progression of the ideas, things like to begin with, um, in addition to that, little phrases like that, they're also very important to your response. But at this initial stage, what I really want people to concentrate on is that ability to read the passage, uh, listen to the lecture, take good notes, and then write a report that synthesizes that information in a, in a nice, clear, effective way with more emphasis on what you heard and just a nice, clear link to what you read. That is what is involved for TOEFL integrated writing. And if you can do that, um, you're, you're destined to get a good score.